Hey, KP, whether it's Luka against Boston or against the Clippers in the playoffs, what is it about these moments from your perspective that allows him to succeed in crucial situations like this? Special talent and, and you know, he, he, he I, I feel like he doesn't surprise us anymore with these shots, you know. Um, it's unbelievable, so glad to, glad to watch it. Yeah, hey KP, uh, what would you say your connection level is like on the court with Luca? Uh, uh, you know, that was two fourth quarter threes you hit were passes from him. But I don't know if you're aware, but fans watch you guys on the court, see how much you interact, and I thought Twitter was going to go nuts when you guys knuckle tap tonight. Yeah, we're we're we're, we're trying to play together and and, and help each other. Um, and, and, you know, we, we want to win at the end. We all want to win here, you know, and then, and that's it. You know, we, we have to keep playing and keep playing together and keep playing well and, and help each other. Say that this season has been disappointing for the Dallas Mavericks would probably be a huge understatement, especially given how dominant they were in the playoffs when both Kristaps Porzingis and Luka Doncic took the floor together. So things have been very weird considering the fact that both Kristaps Porzingis and Luka Doncic have played many games together and were in perfect health. So when we got this report in regards to Luka Doncic's relationship with Kristaps Porzingis and the fact that they aren't necessarily the best of friends from Mark Cuban himself, well, that's just something that definitely piqued my interest. So what's going on guys, your boy Mike here, and before we get to the content, just a quick reminder that Laced Up episode 3 has officially been posted on the Laced Up podcast's YouTube channel. Bear in mind, when we get to 40,000 subscribers, we're giving away a PlayStation 5 or an Xbox Series X to a subscriber that turns on our notifications for that channel. And now that we get all that out of the way, cue the intro. Mike check one, two, one, two. What's going on, everybody? I don't think there's been a team that rebuilt their entire roster more efficiently than the Dallas Mavericks. In 2018, as Dirk Nowitzki was riding off into the sunset, the Dallas Mavericks had the opportunity to trade up to select Luka Doncic. Well, obviously they had to trade Trey Young in order to do so, but at the end of the day, the Hawks got Trey Young and the Dallas Mavericks got Luka Doncic and the rest was history. And it didn't take very long for us to realize that that was a very good decision. But what was even more remarkable is after Luka Doncic's Rookie of the Year season, where he averaged 21 points per game, 6 assists per game, and 8 rebounds per game, it didn't take the Dallas Mavericks very long to finally get himself the proper running mate. Now, if you ever watched the way Mark Cuban constructs his rosters, he typically aims for more international players. I always wondered if this was more of a marketing ploy for Mark Cuban or just to make the Dallas Mavericks a more global approved franchise or if it's just purely a coincidence but his previous franchise cornerstone Dirk Nowitzki was from Germany and his current franchise cornerstone Luka Doncic is from Slovenia and the man that he went ahead and traded for in order to pair with Luka Doncic was Kristaps Porzingis a man that is from Latvia and then you factor in the fact that he actually attempted to trade for Goran Dragic as well and you could understand why I felt the way I did so in the midst of the 2018 to 2019 season while Kristaps Porzingis was rehabilitating a torn ACL the Dallas Mavericks traded away a player that seemed to have a significant amount of upside at the time in Dennis Smith Jr., DeAndre Jordan, Wesley Matthews, and a 2021 first round pick in addition to a 2023 first round pick. In addition to this, the Mavericks got Tim Hardaway Jr., and the question about whether the New York Knicks or Dallas Mavericks won that trade is still debated to this day. But when you look at it for face value, yeah, the New York Knicks are better now that they built around Julius Randle, and the Dallas Mavericks aren't performing as well as you think they would, but none of the players that that were originally traded to the New York Knicks in return for Porzingis are still on that team. Now, in the NBA bubble, against when the Dallas Mavericks faced off against the Los Angeles Clippers, to this day, I still believe the Dallas Mavericks would have won that series if Kristaps Porzingis stayed healthy. 
And unfortunately, that wasn't the case, but the series was extremely close, and the Clippers were clearly dealing with some chemistry issues themselves, and the Mavericks seemed to have had their number until, of course, Porzingis got injured. And while the Dallas Mavericks did lose that series against the Los Angeles Clippers, things were really beginning to look up for them. After all, the core of their team didn't even hit their prime yet, and Luka Doncic wasn't even allowed to legally buy a drink in the United States yet. But this past season, things were a little bit more fishy. Porzingis came back and for the first time in his career, his defensive inadequacies were beginning to become apparent. He didn't possess the lateral quickness that was needed to guard the premier big men of today's NBA. He's still a remarkable scorer and a unicorn at that. He still converts three pointers at a 36% clip while shooting six per game and is good for 20 points per game. He still has a pretty good PER are as well of 21.5 and overall he is positive in his box plus minus although not enough to justify paying him the amount that he is owed and whether or not Kristaps Porzingis is the proper running mate for Luka Doncic and whether they have a good relationship or not is two completely separate conversations. But you can let me know in the comment section down below if you'd like, if you think Porzingis is the ideal max contract running mate for Luka Doncic. Now, you know how things go. As the Dallas Mavericks seem to have disappointed this year in a year that many pegged Luka Doncic as a favorite to potentially win the MVP, the media took to the internet to ask the question whether Porzingis and Doncic even had a good relationship to begin with. So I'm going to throw some cues at you guys and you could tell me whether or not there's something here or not in regards to Luca's relationship with Porzingis. And bear in mind, I do acknowledge that some of this could be slightly nitpicky, but we're getting to the real meat and potatoes just in a second. So check this out. Do you remember when Luka Doncic hit this remarkable game-winning shot over the Memphis Grizzlies? Well, look at Kristaps Porzingis' reaction. The man looks like he is not happy at all that the shot went in. Doncic is being hugged by Tim Hardaway Jr. Everyone's celebrating and smiling, but not Kristaps Porzingis. And whenever Porzingis gets asked about Luka Doncic, it seems like he's just rolling his eyes and he's getting irritated. AP mentions not being surprised by these things. What does he do in practice or what shots that he's hit in practice or, or behind the scenes away from the cameras stand out to you when you think about just his uncanny ability to make shots sometimes? Yeah, he's always messing around with like half court shots or, or full court shots and things like that. So, you know, it's, it's, it's messing around, but it's also at the same time working on those kind of shots, you know, and, and you know, leaning forward, leaning backwards like, like today. So, uh, yeah, he's, you know, he's worked on them messing around and he's able to make them you weren't in europe uh when he was at real um but you guys did play together in Eurobasket or your league a little bit did did do you feel like he had this reputation even back then when when he was just breaking onto the scene that he would make weird shots like this yeah even against us in in the quarterfinals he made like super deep three banked it in um so yeah i feel like he's you know uh, he's kind of always had a good feeling for, for those kind of shots. And I don't know if this is because Porzingis doesn't like Doncic, but I think this is more because he at one point was Luka Doncic. He was the international superstar that was playing for the New York Knicks. Everything was about him. And now that he got traded to the Dallas Mavericks, he's no longer the number one guy. Everyone is asking him about Luka Doncic. And maybe as a result of that, he could be a little bitter. Look at this quote. And this is from the video that we showed you earlier. Kristaps Porzingis on his dynamic with Doncic. Yeah, we're trying to play together and help each other. We want to win. And at the end, we all want to win here and that. That's it. We have to keep playing and keep playing together and keep playing well and help each other. In that same interview, there was a mention about the fact that whenever Kristaps Porzingis and Luka Doncic fist bump, it's seen as this remarkable moment because they typically don't interact with each other. And Porzingis doesn't take some time to exactly shoot that down. And if you look historically, Porzingis has been very passive aggressive with the way that he handles conflict. Going back to the time that he was with the New York Knicks, 
There were multiple awkward exchanges with Phil Jackson. And oh yeah, speaking of New York, the toxic team that he demanded a trade from because they weren't winning or doing well, well, Chris Dapps Porzingis mentioned how he missed New York right before playing in New York. Uh, how does it feel to you going back to New York? Does, do you still, you know, is it still something that you look forward to that you that you look at, you know, in a certain way? Yeah, I do. Uh, I miss the city. I miss I miss this place. A lot of great memories. Um, every time I come back, it's, it's special. You know, I, a lot of people here still, you know, uh, recognize me and, 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 you know, show me, show me love and show me support. So it's always good to come back. And of course, New York is a large city that is known for its iconic culture. But when you just add all these things up, then clearly there's something wrong at the surface. And if I don't have you convinced at this point, well, how about I bring on the owner of the Dallas Mavericks, a man that always has kept it real with his fans, Mark Cuban. So this is what Cuban told 105.3 The Fan. On the court, Kristaps Porzingis and Luka Doncic are fine. I mean, coach is coach, and the coach kind of runs the show, so everything gets worked out on the court. That's not to say that there aren't dust-ups, because there are. That verifies the fact that, hey, there not everything is remarkable between Luka Doncic and Kristaps Porzingis. But in order to save face, Mark Cuban went on to compare this relationship to another remarkable duo that eventually won a championship in Dallas. I'd compare it to Jet Terry and Dirk Nowitzki. If you remember, when we first got Jason Terry, Dirk was not a fan. Dirk did not like him, and we lost in a playoff series because Jason Terry made a mistake against Nash, and that just made it even worse. They weren't best friends at the beginning, but they did grow to like each other and grew to be great friends, and that's just part of the process when you've got young kids who are growing up. It took forever before Dirk Nowitzki and Jason Terry did anything off of the court together. A long time. Yeah, I mean, Kristaps Porzingis and Luka Doncic get along fine, it's just that they're different people. They like to do different things. And while I do want to take Cuban's word for this, I think this is significantly deeper than the fact that both Kristaps Porzingis and Luka Doncic don't have the same type of hobbies. I mean, if you have one of them completely getting annoyed by the mentioning of another in an interview, and literally you have a clip of Porzingis not celebrating a game winner by Doncic, then clearly there's cause for concern. But at the same time, you have to bear in mind that whenever a team is underachieving, the media will like to do anything to point fingers and put the blame on one another. Just look at the Boston Celtics a few weeks ago. Many fans were calling for Danny Ainge's head, and once they started winning once again, then things started to subside a little bit more. So let me know in the comment section down below, what do you guys think about this? Do you think Luka Doncic and Kristaps Porzingis have this unsalvageable lack of team chemistry, or do you think this is just a minor hiccup that all teammates go through? Aside from that, if you enjoyed the video, make sure to leave a like, subscribe, and turn on our notifications, because I'll always bring you the craziest news that we hear in the NBA. I'm your boy Mike, and I'm dropping our mic until our next upload.